Code Agents, it's Tristan again, and this time we've got two awesome guests with us. Justin out of Canada, he's the number one Remax agent in all of Canada. Dude, I was gonna say the world, but you know what? Canada is the world. There you go. No, not, not at all. Well, and thank uh, thanks for being here, man. Appreciate you. And then we've got Dan Corkle, CEO of Follow Up Boss. Uh, I've been using Follow Up Boss forever since you created it, Dan. So thanks for doing that. I love it. Uh, and I know both of us, Justin and I, are using Follow Up Boss. Let's get right into it, guys. So, Justin, thanks for being with us. Let's uh, let's talk about first who you are and what you do in regards to real estate so that people know the power of, of Justin. <laughs> the power of me. Well, I'm just a regular yeah. guy, so no different than uh, you or anyone else. So thank you again for having me on here today. It's uh, And uh, I'm the team leader of Justin Haver Associates, um, a team that's uh, within uh, Remax First, a brokerage here in uh, Calgary, which is actually the very first Remax office and franchise in Canada, believe it or not, many, many years ago. And uh, we're a team of 45 licensed agents, uh, plus about 10 support staff. And, uh, you know, last year we were fortunate to be recognized as the number one Remax team in all of Canada and number five in the world based on both production and closed transactions. I'm very fortunate to be surrounded by a lot of incredible agents and staff. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of joking around sometimes with my agents that I'm just a mascot. But, uh, you know, I'm just very fortunate <laughs> to work with uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of great people. And uh, at the end of the day, we're all about serving our clients at the highest possible level. And um, I'm operating out of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And, uh, you know, we've been in a challenging market for many years, ever since the uh, price of oil kind of collapsed in 2014, 2015, our economy has been incredibly challenging. And, uh, you know, here we are again. It's like we're uh, going through another round of yet another set of challenges that are coming up on us, except for this time we are obviously dealing with this global pandemic. However, um, you know, we will all get through this and we just got to kind of reinvent ourselves at times. All right, good. I love that that you brought that up with the challenges because I know you guys have gone through through some pretty tough markets, right? More often than than we have here, Justin. Can can you tell us how you shifted over into into what you became? Because I think it's a common theme. What Dan and I have seen over the last few years is that these tough markets make the agents that we are now, right? And I think that's the beautiful part about it. So tell us through that process, what happened and what changed? Well, you know, and I think that in, in a good market or a strong market, anyone can sell a house, right? Mm -hmm. uh, even homeowners can just put a for sale sign in their front yard. Chances are they may be able to successfully get their home sold. Whether or not there will be a few hiccups or not, uh, you know, we all can kind of uh, debate on that a bit when a homeowner sells their own home. Yeah. However, same thing goes for an agent. Anyone can sell a house in a good market. It doesn't take a lot of skill set. But when the market becomes challenging, that's where the agents that are actually able to get the results for their clients will stand out. And what we have experienced uh, here over the last several years is that, you know, the consumer seeks out the agents that are able to get the results. And that those are the agents that are really, like, bunkering down, rolling up their sleeves, and yeah, you know what, you're gonna have to work harder. You're also gonna have to do, you know, more work essentially to get the same results, but that's what also required to get the results for the clients in tough market conditions. All right, good, man. Well, let, let's get into it. Dan, you, you created Follow Up Boss a little while ago, 2010, 2011, when was that? 2011, we got started. All right, good. and. You created it for the real estate world as a CRM. Uh, some call it basic, some call it deep. It really depends how you use it, right? It can be used for massive teams like Justin's, right? Or it can be used for a single agent. But let's merge both of, both of these things together, Justin and Dan. So Justin, you run a massive team, right? And the world shifted right now. How is your team using follow-up boss 
or any CRM really to be able to focus in on what it is that you need to be doing right now. Cause I noticed that a lot of agents are lost just because they're home and they have a change of environment. They don't know what to do. It's like all of a sudden they forgot what to do. So how are, how are your agents using the CRM right now? Well, you know what, we, um, we were so fortunate to transfer over to follow up boss here a few years ago, we were managing, you know, essentially 16 different lead sources in our business. And uh, I hate to admit it, but all the agents were managing their leads on the back end of about 10 different websites. So that is not a good thing for being organized or, or anything like that. So when we moved over to follow up boss, we were able to get all the lead sources into one place and it has literally improved the agent's experience on managing all of their clients. And it's been simplified because all the agents have to do is just ensure that they follow the processes that we have set out for the team with the expectations, following you know the smart lists, which are awesome. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You just start on a list and you just start contacting you know your opportunities that are sitting in there. And um, you know, it's at the end of the day, you know, a lot of agents can be lost right now for sure. Mm-hmm. But you just got to do the work. You got to sit down and be focused on the tasks at hand. Reach out to everyone that's in your follow up boss account, uh, and uh, just have a a process that you're going to follow each and every day. Because you know, as long as we're sitting at home, we should still be productive and taking action. Okay, what are those actions that you're noticing that are actually working right now? Because I've got my team, uh, and what we're doing is we're going back into our CRM. We're making sure that we're categorizing everybody uh, the right way now, just in case we miss anybody. And then we're going in deeper and saying, okay, past clients, fear, new leads, and we're reaching out to those. Is there a special thing that you do in the way that your team reaches out to these, or how have you shifted right now? Well, what we have shifted is we removed any and all sales language from uh, our conversations when we initiate with, uh, you know, any potential client or anybody that's in our database. And what we've really done is we have encouraged all the agents to reach out to every single opportunity they have in their follow-up boss account, Mm -hmm. either by sending a bomb bomb video email through the system Mm -hmm. or utilizing text messages if you don't have a dialer associated with your follow-up boss account, I highly encourage you to get that because, I mean, again, it stores all the communication under each lead that's in the system. And we're simply just reaching mm-hmm. out to everyone. How are you? How's your family? Is there anything we can do to support you in this current time and space? That's it. Um, you know, a lot of people are sitting at home, home alone, I guess, self-isolation. And, uh, you know, it's, it's part of our duty is to reach out to everyone and check in on them. And, you know, if they're sitting at home, they're just happy to hear from somebody, happy that somebody's checking in on them. And, uh, you know, we want to be that next person that they think of if they're thinking about real estate down the road. Right now, our concern is not necessarily real estate, but when we even reach out to our clients, just asking them how they're doing, many of them will naturally bring up the conversation about real estate. What's going on in the real estate market? What are you guys seeing? And uh, it actually creates a lot of great conversations and it has even created some business in the meantime. You know, we've um, facilitated several transactions here where uh, we're utilizing virtual showings. We've even sold houses to people without them physically stepping foot inside the property. And the first time they saw the property was when the agent handed them the keys. That's also the first time. (laughs) That was also the first time they met the agent. That's funny. I love that. I love that, Justin. But, you know, the the cool thing about, about what you're telling us right now is that I think you and I, and I don't know you that well, Justin, which sucks. I should get to know you better. Um, You and I have probably been running business this way already for years which is not selling. We're using a lot of heart to start with, right? And it's been difficult for some people to shift into that because for years, they've been told to sell, 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 right? Without putting the relationship first. Yeah. And and I think 
we're going to see a lot of people either shift out of this world or having to adapt to how to talk to people, which is putting people first. Right. And that's why you've been so successful too. So I, I want to go ahead. Go ahead, Justin. Yeah. You know what? You're, you're completely right. I mean, nobody wants to be sold. Um, on a normal day, yet alone now, right? So that's why we shifted our sales language and we're, we don't necessarily operate as a pushy sales team in any shape, way or form. We're simply here to be the trusted advisor, giving the clients you know, all the information that we have at our disposal to ensure that they can make an informed decision for themselves and their family. Um, you know, We completely shifted our marketing when the COVID-19 hit because we didn't want to, you know, one compete with all the noise out there because mm -hmm. obviously there's a lot of fear in the marketplace. Yep. So we just kind of shifted that to just reaching out to the clients, uh, checking in on them, supporting local businesses and uh, just being leaders in our community. Have you guys tried uh, doing any virtual open houses yet or, uh, events through Facebook in that way or no? We have done some. So one of the things that actually happened here in Canada with the CREA, Canadian Real Estate Association, who owns and controls Realtor.ca. I know that you guys don't own your Realtor.com down there, yeah. uh, which is, again, we got to give a little plug to them because we actually get free leads from our Realtor website. Uh, so one of the things that they actually launched here a couple of weeks ago is the ability to host a live streaming open house through realtor.ca. So you just basically got to feed the link into uh, realtor.ca and uh, it will have a date and time. Uh, we've been kind of playing around with it a bit, but uh, you know, as we get going more into this uh, time period, we will uh, be looking harder at that. I love it. All right, a couple of questions here that I want to address, actually quite a few. First, yes, this is being recorded. So lucky you, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll upload it there. I just put the link up there. Also, there's some examples of what we're doing in regards to shifting, like Justin was saying, to doing events online, open houses online, and the things that we've done. So take a look at that. Please grab it, put it on your browser, and then subscribe. Uh, questions now here. This is, now this is specifically for follow-up boss, Dan and Justin. And I don't know if either of you can take this on, but saying, so what's the difference between a realty juggler and follow-up boss? I've never used realty juggler, so I can't say it anything. Uh, Justin, have you? No, I have not used realty juggler, but I can't. Hey, go ahead, Dan. I haven't used it, so I can't really speak to it, but um, I would just, we've got a free trial as well. And I think this person mentioned they did a free trial of that. So yeah, yeah I would just, just try out our system and um, yeah, just give it a shot, essentially. Justin, what were you going to say in addition to just follow up us? You know, like I'll say this, like the best CRM is a CRM that you use uh, first and foremost, right? But at the sec, to add on to that, uh, follow up us has been an incredible addition to our business because it allows us to manage all of our lead sources in one place. You know, the agents are able to uh, obviously conduct very good business uh, by following this very simple system. It does take a bit to get it set up, but once you set it up to flow with how your business operates, um, you know, Follow Up Boss is definitely the uh, CRM that at least I enjoy using for our team. Okay, good. And then for me, guys, there's a reason I've been with them since 2011-ish. I actually, Dan, I left you for a year, okay? <laughs> but then I came back. <laughs> and I think I came back like a year after. Uh, so what is that? That's like almost a decade. And yeah, we've been working on a decade, basically. So, um, so there's a reason I go back to Dan, because we get to test out everything. And there just isn't anything like, like follow-up boss, guys. So, uh, and, I, and we get to test everything out. So... Uh, it's just been the best. So some questions here, more questions. And these are really good questions. And they're going to be a mix of for both of you. And I think they go along with, with what we're talking about. Justin, this one's for you. Uh, it's from David, David, David Rosenbaum. You say you shifted your marketing. Uh, David's a broker owner. What shift did you do? And I'm going to get more specific, Justin. What shift have you done that has paid off the most? 
you know, for right now. Yeah, right now. Right now. You know what? I think it's too early to say what, um, what will pay off the most, right? Because it does take some time for things to evolve and things to obviously turn into transactions. You know, looking at our market here in, in Calgary right now and as of today, our sales are down by 75% in the marketplace. So I think that, you know, all the seeds that you're planting today is for future business down the road. We all know that in this business, we reap the rewards of the seeds that we plant today, 60 to 90 days down the road. So that's why it's incredibly important for, you know, you to kind of shift your messaging. The messaging that we are having right now on the radio is much softer. You know, it's understanding that people have put things on hold. However, we are offering programs where people can still start marketing their home through our comingsoon.ca program. Um, comingsoon.ca is another website that we own and operate exclusively for our market and, um, you know, where we do our pre-marketing. So we're basically doing pre-marketing of homes um, probably to go live roughly around May 15th ish, we can obviously move that date forward and backward, depending on, again, the current environment that we're in, as well as the client's desire for, uh, you know, going live on the MLS, right. But uh, aside from that, softening up the messaging and again, offering solutions to the people out there, you know, clients are kind of frozen with the wait and see approach, especially if they're sellers, they may not necessarily want you know, people to come into their homes. We're still offering them the ability to list their homes using 3D Matterport tours on every single property, video tours, and uh, offering virtual showings. So there are many solutions that you can have even with the way that the market is. All right, perfect, good answer. Dan, have you seen anybody, as you you guys have like thousands of people on Follow Boss, um, have you seen your top clients do something specific that, that they have said, hey, this is working for us? Or is that something that you're not privy to? Um, I think what's working is uh, it's kind of like what always works is consistency. And so like when I look at someone like Justin's account, I, I kind of feel like it's not just the, like Justin and his team have started doing what they need to do in the last like four weeks. It's kind of like, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like they've been Makes doing sense. it in the last like 10 years kind of thing or five years or whatever, a, a long, long time, like they've refined their process. Um, yeah. And so when I look in there, what I'm seeing, like literally looking at like their leaderboards, things like that is, you know, like one single agent has texted like 1700 texts, you know, and has been on the, the phone for like 10 hours in the last 30 days, just talking to their database. And so, I, I mean, that, that that's, I guess the difference that we see, like there's just massive amounts of, activity and you know like justin was saying reaching out hey, can we help i'm sure there is some still like transactions they were in the middle of or whatever they're handling that mm. um so i just think the question is more about is more about like not just what can i do now but like what maybe are the things that i wasn't consistent with before that maybe like now's the time to really stop being uh consistent if that makes sense so that makes sense Go ahead, justin. And, and if i could add to that i mean you know we all, we all can agree that it's going to take two to three times the effort today to sell a home than what it took 30 days ago, 60 days ago, yeah. right? And with all this spare time that we have right now in self-isolation, and yeah, you know what? Business is not where it used to be. We should be spending that time really focusing on our database, reaching out to everybody, even everybody on your, in your cell phone. Uh, reach out to all of them and uh, also work on your business. Master your, your skills, master your listing presentation, your buyer presentation, you know, build out systems and processes or templates uh, in DocuSign, for instance, or even build out, uh, you know, video templates in uh, BombBomb by having ways of explaining your consumer relationship guide, purchase agreements, uh, buyer brokerage agreements, whatever it is, just make sure you set yourself up for success down the road. You know, this is, uh, you know, we're getting ready to step on the field, right? So we are probably starting to kind of taper down with this and we're going to get uh, to go outside again one day soon, I hope. And when that happens, uh, you know, it's going to be different. Business will be different. We're not going to go back to the way that it was. And we have to accept that and we have to learn to embrace 
technology. And perhaps we also need to learn to be more consistent in our daily activities, in our business. And that is one thing that doesn't cost anything, guys. You know, we can do all the marketing in the world, but if you're not taking action, you're going to miss out on so many opportunities that you're spending big dollars on, especially when you're doing marketing to generate seller leads, buyer leads, or whatever it is that you're doing. You want to make sure you take action on all of them and treat them all with the highest regard because, again, it's business potentially today and definitely down the road. Yeah, don't stop going. I, I love Dan's response and your addition to that, Justin. It's the consistency. Dan, that is what all top producers do uh, worldwide in every vertical, every sales vertical, everything. The consistency, no matter how boring, no matter how fearful it looks, it's the consistency, which goes into sure. something Justin said. Justin, you said that you're still calling leads. You're still doing this. Have you cut back on certain types of lead generation or are you still going all in on online leads you know with our one of the things that i'm very very fortunate uh, with is that um, i run multiple websites in our marketplace and what has been the foundation of my business since i got into the business 15 years ago is investing into search engine optimization building up websites where you have you know high authority websites with high organic rankings so I'm able to actually get a really good pulse on what's going on in the market by watching the organic traffic, especially when I have multiple sites, you know, in my market right now. And I also have websites in other markets like Edmonton, Kelowna, Los Angeles. So I can actually see that, you know, there's an organic trend upwards. So you can see that, okay, people are starting to look again. Um, and then you can kind of manipulate, uh, you know, your ad spend if you're doing some PPC or retargeting, that kind of stuff. Um, I did cut back a bit on my radio and billboards. Uh, we have a massive presence here in town on billboards and especially the uh, international airport. And there's no point in being up there when nobody's flying, right? So you got to make some strategic moves and then also shift stuff around a bit. And obviously you got a business to run. Uh, one of the things that I've known is that, you know, expense reduction never in increases revenues right? But you got to do it smart. You just can't just drive down the street and throw tens of thousands of dollars out the window, hoping that it's going to turn into something. Sometimes it is with trial and error. Don't get me wrong. I've been there, done that. And I would still try a new marketing avenue to see if it does work. But these things are, again, stuff that you got to do consistently over a long period of time. And because I've consistently invested into, for instance, search engine optimization for 15 years, that is probably why I have websites that rank so incredibly well. Okay, makes sense. How about uh, ZillowRealtor.com? You do any of that? Well, Zillow is uh, trying to cross the border into Canada. Uh -huh. um, you know, we already have a national portal. So oh, they're cool. not, yeah, so Realtor.ca is owned by Canadian Real Estate Association. So it's owned by the members. And we don't pay them for leads at all. Um, so Zillow is trying to uh, come up here, but they're having a bit of a challenging time. Obviously, we are all um, learning from what happened down in the U.S. with Zillow. And uh, we don't necessarily feel that Zillow will enhance or help sell more real estate in Canada than what is already being sold because we already have a national portal and, you know, Let's be real. Zillow's in the business to sell leads and sell leads based on the data that they get from the members. All right, makes sense. Eileen uh, says, "Don't let them in." So, <laughs> well, <laughs> we got to build a wall, Justin. right? We'll build yeah, a wall. Gotta... We'll build a wall out of snow. Yeah. So I get a question for for Justin. I think this is kind yeah. of like. This is from our Facebook group. Uh, so Roger was asking, I think his question was really about like accountability. So obviously you've built this massive team. You've got a lot of people working with you. And I'm just curious, like we talked about consistency. I think that's what a lot of smaller teams struggle with. And like I struggle with sometimes as a business owner is like, like I know I knew how to keep myself consistent and accountable. But then you're learning this new skill of keeping other people accountable. So I'm just curious, like what kind of things are you guys doing and you know you have done over the last couple of years to like you know build that culture and just keep people consistent and converting these leads you know 
accountability is, uh, you know, what, what do they say? Highest form of love. But at the same time, based on every human being's experience as a child and accountability, it can also be a very uh, uncomfortable area, right? But uh, one of the things that we have learned over the years is that, you know, accountability is a fine line of tension where you, you can't push too hard. And at the same time, you know, you can't make someone do something they don't want to do. And you also have to accept that, you know, some people are simply aren't gonna follow the process and systems that you have in place. So what we have actually learned over the last few years is that you set all the expectations at the time when you hire them, right? And what we have found is that, you know, it's like, we've all, well, we all know the agent that's been in the business for many, many years and they're refusing to change or refusing to do something or try something new. And one of the things that we found very, very impactful is that when we bring on a newer agent to the team and they just, you know, they buy into the system 100% and they go all in. Mm -hmm. The next thing you know, they succeed and they make a ton of sales. And we ask them in front of the team, we're like, so what contributed to your success? They're like, well, I worked hard. And two, I just followed the system, right? So that then teaches the other agents like, okay, well, that person is now outselling me. They just came on the team maybe a year ago or six months ago. What are they doing different? Well, they're following the system. So maybe I should follow the system as well. And the beautiful part about follow-up boss and having a CRM like that, where, you know, as a team leader, you can actually have a 10,000 foot view. So you can see what the agents are doing. Now, if you see someone is kind of falling behind, you can then reach out to them to see if you can support them. Is there anything that they need help with? Um, maybe it also will put some light on some training opportunities for you and the team to ensure that everybody has a better understanding of how the system work, works and how the system is there to help them do more business, which in return will enhance their life for themselves and their family. That's what I like about the dialer, actually, Justin, having having the ability to shift. Um, Dan, can you show us the screen on Follow Up Boss uh, so that people can understand the process? It just makes it easier for us and sure. it's so yeah. integral of what we do. Of when we dial Justin, and then when we you, know, you can email and then you can text all in that one screen. We just shift it over. Um, and I'm gonna go over this really quick, Justin, because I know you guys do the same thing. So this is Justin's uh, account there, but you could see there, this is the, are we in the email? Yeah, we're in the email section. So as soon as the lead comes through right now, Justin, the leads that are coming through, through Facebook or through Google, you know, SEO or PPC, we're still calling them. And the first thing that we're saying is we've changed our script, just like you said, right? We're using a lot more heart. And it's along the lines of, hey, Dan, it's, uh, this is Tristan. And they're like, oh, hey, Tristan, or who's Tristan? I'm like, oh, well, look, you just registered on our, uh, through our Facebook page. And I know you're probably not gonna purchase anything anytime soon, but I also don't wanna spam you, Dan. Can you tell me a little bit more about the areas you're looking in so I can at least send you homes that you'd like to see, right? And so we've shifted the script so it's not as direct. We're giving them the control so that they can then tell us, you know what, you're right, I'm not looking for anything right now, but let me tell you the city. Or, which is happening still, this, which is, no, 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 you're wrong, Tristan, we actually do wanna buy right now, right? But those are far and few in between, but it's still happening. Now here on the screen, when we're calling, we can call from here through the dialer and then shoot them a similar email and then also text them all from this center screen, you just shift it, uh, the top tabs there. But the cool thing is this, on accountability, I can see what my agents are texting. And so if they're not going along with what we talked about and saying, hey, it's time to use a lot more heart, and I see that they're hard selling, I can go to them and be like, hey guys, I need you to tweak this a little bit because I can't have you messing up the brand right? Because the brand is what people think about us when we're not in the room. And I want them to think of us when this is all over as, wow, you know what? 
these guys, they, these ladies, they really cared about us. They weren't pushing anything. They were just concerned about how we were doing, right? And so that's, that's what I love about this screen here. Justin, you wanted to add something. Yeah, you know what? I think it's really important to obviously just uh, to come from a place of, you know, it's a courtesy call. It's a courtesy text, courtesy email. Actually, uh, a buddy of mine in Fort McMurray, Brett, he actually uh, mentioned that that's one of the things that they do whenever they reach out to a potential client. They just say, hey, this is just a courtesy call just seeing, uh, you know, how you're finding the website, et cetera, et cetera. But the minute you use the language, it's a courtesy call, the guard drops, right? And the same thing when we reach out to them, hey, how are you? How's your family? I'm not trying to sell you anything right now. Their guard just drops, right? Um, so I, I'm right on par with you on that one there. It's just, uh, again, just coming from the heart, just connecting with them, ensuring that you meet the clients where they're at in the current time and space. I think that's right. It's not, it's not where you're at. Justin, that was perfect. I wish I could have recorded that little section. Uh, it's not where the client, it's not where you are mentally. It's where your clients are. And that's where we need to meet them, right? So I, I love that you said that. Now, there are a whole bunch of questions that I didn't answer, so I'm going to go back to them. Uh, and they're, they're mostly for you. Justin, so here, let me, let me go to them. I'd love to know, this is from Eric, I'd love to know how Justin grew his team so large and did so under the Remax name with all the fees and the splits and the tools. Um, if you can give us a high level of that, Justin, how did you do that? You know what, it's not about the fees um, at all. It's about you know, ensuring that you have the value for the agents to, you know, join your team. And I mean, one of the things that we've been able to do with our team is, you know, really emphasize on building a, a massive brand in a marketplace. And we have a multi-million dollar a year marketing plan that we apply. So, I mean, a lot of the agents that uh, come onto our team, some of them are even experienced. Heck, I even got the agent that mentored myself when I got into the business on our team. Wow. Um, you know, so it's, it's a, just a testament to, what we offer as a team, we offer value, we offer opportunities, we offer leverage and branding in the marketplace. When we can be in the marketplace where other agents are telling their clients to call us to get their home sold because they have been trying to sell their client's home for over a year, been unsuccessful at doing so, and then we're able to sell it in less than 30 days, that's a testament to the brand and the results that we have been able to achieve in a very, very challenging market. So, you know, I see Remax as like for ourselves, like I like to play the game of leverage, right? So here in our marketplace, Remax sells about 50% of the homes on a yearly basis. Wow, dude, I didn't know that. Right. So of that, you know, like, so if you go talk to a consumer, if you are in a marketplace where there's a massive brand like that, wouldn't you want to align yourself with a brokerage brand that contributes to about 50% of the sales in the marketplace? And then where do we rank within that system? Well, we're number one team in all of Canada. So that is how we play the leverage uh, for that to some regard. And again, it's not about us. It's about the client. It's about getting results for them on a consistent basis. I love that. Going back to consistency right there. And I think that's the key right now with so much, with so much changing, Justin. Don't you think that it's going to be a great opportunity right now for the next mega agents to come out of this? Like those those agents that are, were barely growing and shifted in the right way. Like a year from now, those, some of those are going to be the megas, right? Yeah. And you know what? And at, at the same time, I think it takes a lot of time to, to build up a big team and to build up a business. And that's one of the things that we see in this industry as well is that, you know, you have agents that get into the business because obviously it's an exciting career and it's a career where you can have unlimited potential. And they think that instantly they want to have a team because that's going to bring them success. Yeah. Like it has taken me 15 years to where we are today. And it has taken, you know, a lot of failures, a lot of sleepless nights and a lot of, you know, pretty scary business decisions that I've had to make over the years. 
-hmm. because you know like these things take time to build and it's a slow slow process it is not you know you don't get your license and next year you have 40 agents under you so one of the things that i say to agents if they're looking at starting a team is one how much business do you have for yourself Mm -hmm. right how are you supporting yourself now do you have enough business to support another person (laughs) <laughs> that's so true right because that's what you essentially need to do by adding more people it's not going to make you more money it's actually going to make you less money because you have to give them business so they can support themselves and their families that was I the first know. thing i learned man when i started a team i was like oh i took a massive pay cut with every person i was like holy crap yeah no i you know what i hear that all the time you know people are like oh man you, you know you must be just rolling in i'm like dude i take all this like i take the stress i take the risk and you make more money as an individual agent than you do as a team leader profit yeah Yeah, but the thing on being a team is that you also buy your time back right so we get to do a lot more things because we're we're the team leaders but we also take all the risk justin which is what you said I look at it as, you know, it's an opportunity to have the ability to influence so many more people in a positive way. Yeah. That Very is true. What, that's what fulfills me nowadays. It's, it's not Very about, true. you know, obviously you got to run a profitable business to some degree, but it's also the ability to impact, you know, your agents and seeing that it changes their lives. And then at the end of the day, it's also about the ability to serve our clients at the highest level. Yeah. That's true. So Justin, in regards to change, you mentioned that your approach has changed, right? You cut back on the ads that you were doing at the airport, right? Obviously makes sense. Um, And your approach is, is coming in from a point of contribution and giving, right? Being concerned. What other things are, are you changing or have you changed recently? Anything that stands out? You know, it's just doubling down on effort, Um, you know, trying to lead the entire team of agents and staff to, you know, really roll up their sleeves and apply themselves more to the systems and process that we have in place. You know, if we're sitting around at home, you know, we should be spending that time on our business because, you know, it is going to open up again and we got to be ready to go when that happens. Yeah. So, you know, we're again going on video right video 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 and i mean we've been hearing that for years but uh, you know if you look at um you know the way the world is right now do you think the world and do you think the consumers are more receptive to using video now i mean just look at uh, the stock price of zoom i mean a month ago it was at probably 111 bucks and now it's about 150 bucks right so i think the world is more open to using video and you know, we're applying obviously use of Zoom just like we're using right now, but even with our clients, having your initial buyer consultation over Zoom, talk about saving time and talk about getting face to face with them right away. And yeah. um, from the convenience of your office or your home and for the client's convenience. So I think that, you know, even after this pandemic is over, I think there's going to be many amazing technologies that we're going to be applying to our business. Uh, to one enhance the client experience you know if you're in a challenging market we all know that uh, there's going to be some price reductions yeah right we always encourage those conversations to be face to face now i bet you those are going to be all over zoom and it's going to be convenient for the agent it's also going to be convenient for the homeowner they may be at the office they may have two separate locations at least you can you know conduct that meeting face-to-face virtually, show the comparables, have that discussion, put together a strategy, get the documents signed electronically, which we've been doing for a long time. And uh, I think that that's gonna enhance the client experience and at the same time, save the agents probably a good hour of drive time for every appointment, which would mean more time with family or on their business. I love that dude. So. In regards to that, it just shows how essential we really are as real estate agents, right? Because even though we haven't been able to show homes in all cases, in some cases, uh, in person, us reaching out to our sphere and our past clients 
has made a difference because now they're reaching back out to us. They're being receptive. They appreciate us. And it shows how this business is more of a relationship business than what we thought, right? Look, with, with Zillow and Open Door and all these other companies, just kind of going off to the side because it's a, it's a weird world that we're in, right? But it just shows, look, shit, it came back down to the relationship. It was always about the relationship, right? And I think that's the beautiful part about this because if you have the right tools, like you do, Justin, if you have the right tech, it just makes this relationship building much easier, right? For sure. And you're bang on there, right? Like, I don't think any technology is going to replace a real estate agent. So one, we have to park that fear that we're going to get replaced. What we got to do is we got to shift our thinking and apply ourselves to these technologies that will make us more applicable to the current time that we're in and also help building those relationships in a much stronger way. Like here's a perfect example. We had one client that, uh, and again, I did a little interview with them over Zoom because they wanted to share their experience with one of our team members. They received a video email from one of our agents and they said, we instantly felt that we could trust the agent because of the video. So think about that. That's the consumer or client, client consumer telling us they instantly felt a the connection. They instantly felt they could trust because they saw the video of the agent that they sent them. Dude, that's, that's it. And that's the power of video, right? The power of but, video. But yeah, you know what? We all freaking hate it. Or most of us do, you know, at one point in time, I mean, myself, I am not a big fan of it. I'm getting more, com <laughs> I'm, not, I'm getting more comfortable with it. The first thing I did was I hired a videographer. That was a few okay. years ago. Now, when the COVID-19 hit, I made a public commitment that I would do a Facebook Live each and every day during this pandemic. I don't know Love why it. I did that, but. <laughs> Good job, man. I think the biggest fear when it comes down to video is that we, we, we think, oh, I'm too fat. My hair is messed up. Oh, I didn't do my makeup. Um, not that I wear makeup, but I'm just saying, oh, I didn't shave or whatever, right? And look, People know you already. They're the ones who are looking at you on a daily basis. You think that they don't see that you're fat or you're too skinny or whatever. It's just you thinking that. So, you know, get over yourself and just do the freaking video already. Right? I know. And that's the, the biggest thing. The biggest hurdle is, you know, taking action. Once you start taking action, don't watch your videos if you don't want to. I mean, it's <laughs> probably a lot simpler not to watch them, right? But yeah. just send them. And then, you know what? Like, if you're afraid of how you look on video, are you afraid of stepping outside the front door of your house? Yeah. Right? Like, you're no different over video than you are in person to me, right? And so that's what we just got to overcome. Yeah, very true. All right, some questions for Dan. Dan, I've got a few questions for you in regards to follow up boss. Justin, you can chime in too, because they, they have to you, do with you a little bit too. Uh, Dan, what's one feature that you wish agents would use more on follow up boss that they just don't? Yeah, I'll show you guys two cool new features. Uh, you can see my screen now, right? Yep, I see it. Yeah, so something we just launched is a template which will show, show you, basically bring up a preview of the last like five properties that people looked at. So okay. in this case, um, oh. you know, it does like a nice little template. It's like, you know, these are some million dollar properties that I can't afford uh, up in Justin. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is all tracked back to full up bus. Wait, um, where did you, where did you go and, and do that? Cause I didn't even know about that. Okay. Let, let me show you two cool things. So there's a templates thing here, and this uh -huh. is now a template called last, last five is what it's called. Uh -huh. Um, Another quick way you can get to it is you type backslash then the template name. So like last five oh. views, this is the one there. And then that just is gonna bring that up really fast. Dude, that's pretty I, sweet. Justin, did you know that? I didn't know that. I learned about this uh, about an hour ago from Dan. Oh, he prepped you, damn it. <laughs> Okay, I got two more quick ones. Uh, so the second one is we're launching group texting. So you'll be able to text multiple people at once. 
Oh. Um, you know, in a group conversation, Justin actually was sharing me this great strategy, like of how he's seeing other teams use that. Um, but basically like using it as a handoff between, uh, like the inside sales agent and then the actual agent getting them all in a group text. Um, yeah, you'll be able to do that inside follow up bus. And I think to Justin's point, you know, people having a lot of success using video there as well. So I love that. Uh, yeah. Group texting has been a big one. And um, we also, so Justin already had his websites through like REW and YLOPO integrated with follow up bus, um, yeah. but a lot of customers don't. So we, we built uh, what we call the follow up bus pixel. You drop it on your website, it tracks everything people do there. And then you can use that in follow up bus, you know, to make sure you're prioritizing your follow up and stuff like that. Um, another cool thing is in the bottom right hand corner here, this is actually a little call to action we added, um, which will prompt people to call and text in the follow up bus. And um, oh, yeah, I was ex cool. yeah, excited to hear before Justin was saying like, uh, you guys had like how much of an increase in uh, text? Though? So we pretty much saw our inbound calls double once we added that feature. And um, you know, the, the nice part about it as well, is it also tracks the user when they're actively on the website. You can see all the pages that they looked at. But we also basically have our general team number 403-217-0003 that's a follow-up boss number as well right so every single call into our team is um, you know recorded and all that stuff and one of the things that i want to add to the beautiful part about using the dialer and follow-up boss it's also an insurance policy for the agents you know in challenging markets you know and typically a real estate transaction can be very emotional for a client uh, we had an instance where, you know, a potential, well, he they were, a, they were buyers They had secured a home and they were just wait, waiting on the closing date. They decided that they were trying to, going to try to get out of the transaction and they came back and they said, we weren't happy with the home inspection. So we were actually able to go back. And this is a beautiful part about having all the communication in one system is we were able to go back and say, well, on this date at this time, and this text message, you said that everything looks great with the home inspection. Let's waive conditions. I love that. That's that was, really that was end of the conversation after that, because they're like, Oh yeah, I guess <laughs> like, oh, that's right. I did say that. Right. But, okay. but the same thing goes, you know, again, um, communicating with clients is, you know, the most important thing that we do. And if we can have it all documented, it's just going to make you look more professional. Um, you know, I'm a big uh, fan of the appointment setter in follow up boss as well. It sends the, all the clients, you know, an invite it makes you look very professional as long as you make sure you know what you're typing in the, uh, in the appointment section. Cause that's something that they will see as well. Yeah. But you know, overall, and then, uh, the texting feature, we're seeing about a 50% response to text messages. And I mean, you know, how many of you guys, you know, as real estate agents, we should probably answer every call that we get on our phone. But how many people do you know that when they get a call and they don't know the phone number, they just, you know, turn the phone over and ignore it. Right. But if they get sure. a text message, they will respond. Yeah, that's very true. And right now, most people are responding by text, even though they're home, they're still responding by text more. Yeah. So really, really good point, Justin. I'm going to ask Dan a question because I think it's not fair if we answer it. So Dan, if there was one feature you wanted on follow up boss, what would it be? Since it's your uh, company. <laughs> that's a good one. We, we discuss this internally all the time. So I and tell you some of Justin's feature requests. Uh, now is zoom integration, uh, ability to pause agents from getting leads. And I know you got a bunch more Justin <laughs> talking about them before, but, um, no, I think like what we're really looking to do with the system this year in 2020, we have so much data we've pulled into the system from your websites, from your phone calls, all the communication with your clients. We're looking at smarter ways to use that. So like, how can we help you prioritize more? How can we do more things with automation? So um, yeah, just automating more things. We have action plans already, but how do we make that more advanced and more, more relevant to the consumer? That's kind of like what Justin pointed out a lot before, like not just for the sake of it, but like how can we add some value? Um, so yeah, more automation and just just making more use of all that information we have in the system is kind of kind of the direction we're going. Um, and then there's you know things we're just trying to incrementally improve all the time, like the mobile apps and, and things like that.
Any, any suggestions as to what else people can use out there for video besides BombBomb? Bomb? Anything you suggest besides BombBomb? Bomb? I love BombBomb. Bomb, so that, that's the one we've got the integration with. Yeah. Um, I also love this tool called JumpShare. It's not really the exact same as BombBomb. Bomb. It's just jumpshare.com. It's really cool for like making quick little videos where you're sharing your screen. And you can also like, as soon as you finish recording, it just uploads it and copies the link to your clipboard. So I love that. And you can put yourself on video in it as well. So you could be like sharing your screen, showing some houses or whatever you want to do and then have yourself, you know, also on webcam. Um, yes, yeah, so I like that one. Ooh, I, I hadn't heard of jump share. Now I'm Googling that right now, Dan. Yeah. I think it's like loom if you've used that. So. Oh, I love loom. Yeah. Is jump share an Australian company? Cause I see a it, kangaroo. I didn't, I didn't think it is, but I know the other kangaroo. Maybe that's why I like it. <laughs> that's the best. I love that. All right. Some more questions for you guys. These are really good questions. Uh, Justin, this one's for you, man. This is from Bill Davis. He asked us at the beginning, uh, and I saved it towards the end here. He says, I don't have a lot of people in my CRM. What do you do after you've called all of them? What do you do? How do you get more? Who do you call? What the hell do you do? Go through your phone. <laughs> <laughs> go through your phone and maybe even go through all your friends on Facebook, right? Um, yes. And then maybe start some lead gen, right? I mean, it's not a bad time to do any sort of lead generation right now as well, especially when people are at home. Um, most people are going to be answering their phones or text messages, as we indicated. So, you know, start building that pipeline for, um, you know, when we get, you know, release from self-isolation. And at the same time, I mean, if you've already contacted everybody, do it consistently. Contact them again in two weeks. How you doing? How's, what have you been up to the last couple of weeks aside from sitting at home? You know, again, just engage with them, have conversations, find out what they're doing, how they're doing, are they struggling? I mean, we all know that during these times, there probably are a lot of people that are struggling mentally as well. So if we can even just reach out to them and just, just be somebody that, to listen to them. Um, you know, again, uh, we're in this together and I think it's time for uh, mankind to be kind to one another and really just connect on a personal level. It shouldn't just be go, go, go 24 seven, sell, sell, sell. It should also be there to care about them. How are they doing? What are their struggles right now? What can you do to help them? A lot of time, it's just listening to them. Good one, dude. I love that. Also guys, look, in some places, I know some places already banned it because agents suck sometimes, but you can also reach out to for sale by owners and think about this. If I'm a for sale by owner and I put up my house for sale today, right? That means I want to sell my home. It just depends on how you approach it. If I'm going to approach it like people normally do, and I'm calling Justin because he's a for sale by owner. I'm like, Hey, Justin, I saw you just put your sale uh, for, for your home up for sale. And I'm just waiting to see when you're going to choose the right agent to sell your home, right? That's the script that everybody uses. But if I approach it differently and I'm like, hey, Justin, I saw that you put your home up for sale. We've been selling some homes right now during this COVID-19 thing. And I just want to help you out and show you what is working. I'm going to send you an email that shows you what we're doing. And you can go ahead and use any of those things. Just let me know what you need. And I'll send you the links to go and do that yourself. I just want to make sure everybody's taking care of themselves and making sure that they're taking care of everybody around them, right? All of a sudden you're coming from value and you're like, hey, here's the link to who we use for Matterport. Here's the link to what we're doing on Facebook for events and open houses. Here's the escrow and title that's still open that's dealing with everything that we're doing. Here are the lenders that are still working. And now you become a resource instead of one that's always selling. So look, just shift your mind a little bit like Justin is talking about. It's a new world that we're in. We got to use a lot more heart. Imagine if you offered every for sale by owner a free Matterport tour. Dude, that's insane. Justin, you just became my best friend. That was brilliant. Because we have a camera. Why not just call him up and be like, we'll do this for you for free? Yeah. So smart. Brilliant. Mike says you're brilliant, Justin. Good job. All right. Questions here. Um, Mike, uh, Mike Cassidy has a question for Justin. Justin, would you care to comment on essential personal quali qualities you look for when you're recruiting members to your team? 
You know, we're all about hiring the right people, uh, making sure that they're fit for our culture. One of the things that uh, we have been able to create, and I mean, this is not something that I created, this is something that people on our team created, and that is a very caring, uh, supportive culture. So we're all about the people asking a lot of personal questions. What, what are they about? What, what fuels their heart, right? What makes their heart beat? What do they love and care about? Um, you know, skill set, we can train them all day long, right? But uh, actually finding good, solid people that are reliable, hardworking. And one of the things that you can't coach, you can't coach desire and drive. That is something that they have to have on their own. Um, I was very fortunate to be in a mastermind here a few years ago where we sat down with um, McPhee, the uh, general manager of the Las Vegas Golden Knights. And he basically shared some really good insight on how they built their organization and how they selected staff and NHL players to play on the team. The number one trait that they looked at was mm -hmm. low ego. Right, so they would they would pass up on a player that had more skill if they had a high ego, and there are no egos in real estate, right? Dude, <laughs> that's brilliant. Right, but but that's I think that's super important is low ego, and you know, and that's that's kind of one of the big things too. It's like you know, like everybody has a form of an ego or another, but it shouldn't be getting in your way for actually conducting business and being part of a team. And uh, one of the, the really neat things about, you know, when you have a very positive culture on the team, one, they're going to be very welcoming to the new team members. And at the same time, it's also at times there are going to be the ones that, you know, maybe we missed something when we hired them. But the, the team and the culture will pick, on, pick up on that rather quickly. Yeah, that's so true. And, you know, that ego also transfers over to, to how you approach clients. And we do the same thing, Justin. We look, the fir very first thing we look for is character, right? What, what's your character? Because I don't want to have to be pushing my whole way to showing you how to do this business. I want you to be extremely receptive and put your ego to the side. And know that you don't have all the answers because I know Justin, he doesn't have all the answers, neither do I, but that's how we approach it. That's why we're always learning. Yeah. So that's super key. Really good one, uh, Justin. There's a couple more questions here. And I want to leave one. There's a Redfin question I want to leave for to the end. So give me a second with that one because I love that one. Uh, Dan, how does it work for your past clients and transaction management, birthdays, anniversaries, and so far? So, uh, so forth. How does that work? Uh, yeah, basically we have a calendar in follow up us we sync it with your Google calendar right now. Uh, someone else had a question about office 365. That's like, we're going to be adding a calendar sync for later. Uh, so yeah, basically we have a calendar in there. Um, in terms of your past clients, the important reason you want them in any CRM is so you know, the last time you talk to them, uh, you can make sure you're keeping track of all that communication. So you can definitely do that in the system. Um, and yeah, just, you know, keep track of everything essentially. Um, yeah, I, I on the ego thing, I, I don't know. Do you reckon me and you could get into Justin's team, Kristen? Um, I think, I think, I think we have talked about <laughs> I think we both failed. I'm joking. <laughs> we'll be good. We'll be good. I, I would not mind working for Justin. He's an awesome guy. Uh, here's another question for you, Dan, uh, in regards to Facebook lead ads or, Instagram lead ads or any type of lead ads, how do they integrate into follow up boss? Uh, yeah. So if you're using lead ads on those platforms, which is essentially when like the information is pre filled out, then th we have an integration with Facebook for that, which and, and Facebook owns Instagram. So it just works through the same thing. Um, we also have integrations with Zapier, um, why Lopo is a company that a lot of our customers use and they do a lot of Facebook marketing and remarketing and things like that. Um, so they also just send leads over. Um, otherwise, if you're not using Facebook lead ads, you're generally just linking them off to a website and then they would, you'd be captured on that website and that would be sent to follow up us. So, um, yeah, pretty much those two ways. Perfect. Okay. And then let's see, Dan, any plans on setting schedules or setting schedules of text messages 
in follow-up boss? Uh, in terms of drip texting, like we've got a lot of integration partners for that. So I can drop the link in the chat. It's about like five companies that integrated with us. Right. Um, yeah, th that's the best way to go for that. Good guys. And I put the link up there for follow-up boss. So if you guys want to test it out, there is a, a trial. I think it's for 14 days, Dan. Is it for 14 yeah. days? All right. It's 14 days. Yeah. Perfect. I put it up there. It's a uh, followupboss.com forward slash lab coat. Here's the question I saved to the end because I thought it was really good. Um, I'm going to ask you, Justin, and then Dan, you can answer, and then I'll, I'll, I'll jump into only because probably Justin has the best answer, and I just want to copy his. Here we go. <laughs> Justin, you ready? Uh, it's from Mike Cassidy. Would you care to comment on the apparent demise of Redfin? And I know Redfin's big in the United States, but let's say when we're saying Redfin, let's talk about all the other companies that are kind of pushing off to the side, cutting back on all of their employees and realizing that this is a lot of a, this is a tough business, especially when everything goes down, right? Because you and I, Justin, we've been through this ups and downs lots of times. Um, so what would you say about a company like Redfin who's kind of stepping away from this temporarily? Well, you know, I think that they're, they're obviously making strategic moves as well to obviously uh, cut back on expenses in order for them to uh, navigate through these challenging times. And, you know, it's no different than you or I. Like, we should al also make smart business decisions. And perhaps in some areas, we do need to make some cutbacks. It's just business 101, right? We can't yep. keep uh, pouring gas on stuff that's just going to blow up and or not necessarily blow up, but if there's nobody buying, we got to be strategic or if there's less people buying, we got to be strategic and ensure that, you know, we're in it for the long haul. Uh, for the companies that are doing that, I mean, you know what, these big tech companies, we all know that they still require people. Transactions aren't going to happen all electronically, all, all digitally without an, a real estate agent. And I think we're always going to be relevant to the transaction, whomever the technology company is, Redfin, Compass. I mean, I know Compass is a brokerage, Redfin is a brokerage, Zillow, Open Door, that kind of stuff. So um, what's really interesting is, you know, how Open Door and Zillow have really paused all their instant offer programs. Yeah. You know, what, what do they know that we don't know? Or are they just basically just kind of holding off to kind of see where, where things settle, right? So, um, you know, at the end of the day, we can only focus on what we can control. That is how we show up each and every day. What action steps are we taking in our business? You know, stay in our lane. Don't focus on the competition. Um, you know, focus on what you control and what you do with your own business. And uh, there's plenty of business out there Nobody's taken away business from anyone, really. Um, you know, you got to make those human connections. That's a, that's a good point that you made at the end, Justin. And I agree with everything you said. And that's that, look, guys, we need to be focused on what we're doing. And we need to be paying attention to how these other companies, Open Door, Redfin, Zillow, everybody is shifting. And we need to be paying attention as to why. And a lot of people were like, wow, Zillow and Open Door and Redfin, they were really pushing the boundaries as to where the industry will be going with this iBuyer program. And all of a sudden, everything is on hold, right? They've pulled back. And so this gives us an opportunity to actually take back a lot of this control that we, were, we had lost. And this connection all goes back to relationship. It all goes back to what Justin said at the very beginning. He said, look, we've got to use a lot more heart, right? The first thing you said, Justin, that you shifted was your approach. Now you're talking to people differently. Yeah. And it goes back to that because somehow we lost all that. We sounded so much like just it's all business. And that was the message that was getting to everyone. And now we're putting a lot more heart into it. And people are hopefully seeing us as more than just another transaction as well. More than just going online and finding an agent that can open the door because we're taking this opportunity to be more than that, right? And, and that's where it comes back to, to who we are. At the end of this, at the end of this whole process, 
I'd like to see Justin, I'd like to see all of us as agents really transform into the next evolution of what agents should be, right? Because then I don't have to worry about Redfin, Zillow, or anybody because I use them to shift. Now this is the new agent, right? Now they should be frightened about who we are and how connected we are to our clients. But I don't know if that's going to happen, right? Uh, you know what? Nobody knows. If we had a crystal ball, we probably would be sitting on the beach somewhere. Justin, yeah. I'd be sitting right next to you, and Dan would be sitting right next to us if we had that crystal Everybody ball. Everybody on this uh, call or Facebook Live would be sitting on the beach somewhere if we had the crystal ball. Oh, and that's, so good. that's the thing, right? Um, you know, nobody really knows what the new normal will be, but we do know it's not going to be the way that it was. Yeah. Right? And we do know that we, as an industry, we do need to shift. We need, do need to, you know, apply our, ourselves to the technologies that we currently have available to us. And yeah. there's nobody stopping you for taking action other than you, yourself, and I. Dude, I'm just going to leave it at that. That was beautiful, Justin. I love that. Thank you. Uh, Dan, anything you want to add in regards to follow a boss or in regards to anything Justin said? I, I just agree. I mean, it's, I think it, it is about relationships. People want to buy from people, do business with people. So that's what, you know, this industry needs to focus on. Like how, how do we, um, yeah, just be more human, use the tools that are available. Like right now, uh, I mean, Tristan is a great example. He, you know, he has 120,000 people in his Facebook group. Right. And you don't need to have that many people, right? You can, you can have a hundred people that you're influential with and you're keeping in contact with, with technology. Um, and, you know, I think if you're not doing video, you should definitely start. I should be doing more video. And I think the last thing I would add is just think about a longer time frame. So don't plan for the next just three months and one year. Think about like Justin's talking about the last 15 years. Think about the next five years where you want to be, the next 10 years. Okay. And I don't think Redfin is going to take over in the next five years or Zillow is going to take it all over. Like it's very unlikely, uh, maybe, but like it's, it's just unlikely. So yeah, focus on where you want to be in five years, then, you know, get to work basically. Guys, thanks for being on. This is recorded. It's going to be on our Lab Code Agents YouTube channel. So just subscribe to that. I put up the link there. And I also put up the link to follow a boss if you want to test them out, give them a test drive. Justin, if people need to send you referrals, what areas do you cover? Uh, well, I cover uh, Calgary and area, Calgary, Airdrie, Cochrane, basically surrounding areas. I also have my toast in the Edmonton market, Kelowna market, and I also got a website in Los Angeles, lahomes.com, which I think we've talked about at one point in time. Perfect. <laughs> so you can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Justin Haver, pretty straightforward. Justin covers all of Canada, so just send him all the leads. Okay, guys, Canada is pretty big, so no. I'm just joking, too. <laughs> if you think of Canada, think of Justin. <laughs> thanks, awesome. Justin. Appreciate all it. All right, thank you. Thank you for having me on here, guys. Appreciate Dan, it. Thanks for being on, guys. Thanks. See you guys. Thanks. Stay safe and healthy and take action. <laughs>